I'm here with Pat Giammarco, founder of Marco's Pizza and Marco's Franchise. Marco's Pizza is the fastest growing pizza company in the U.S. It opened its first store in 1978 in Oregon, Ohio. It's now grown to 900 stores in 35 states, Puerto Rico, Bahamas, and India. Marco's Franchising is top performing franchising in the country, but most importantly, Marco's is known for its authentic Italian pizza. It has raving fans and customers and was voted number one in 2017 America's Favorite Pizza. Marco's franchise was also featured on the CBS program Undercover Boss and had 7.3 million viewers. Mm -hmm. So where were you born in Italy? Uh, the central part of Italy is called Abruzzo region. It's about an hour and a half east of Rome. You came over when you were nine, mm -hmm. nine and a half. Yes. Your family brought you over. Your dad came over first. My dad was here a year before us. Okay. And then my mom and my brother and my sister came at uh, a year later. Well, you have such an inspiring uh, story and inspiring journey. You know, coming here, you know, at nine, working in your family, you know, pizzeria, yeah. coming straight from school, you yeah. know, going to work. Uh, what was life like, you know, as, as a young, young teenager growing up in the family business? And when did you know that you wanted to, you know, open up your own store and expand it? Well, you know, coming from Italy and growing up in Dearborn area, actually, in Detroit area, uh, you know, my dad went to work. My mom went to work in the morning. She used to work at Hudson's. She would make suits and jackets. She was a good tailor. So what was it like? Just help out. Cut the grass, help out around the house. Looking back, it was like, well, I'm glad I did that, you mm -hmm. know, because I learned the, the ethics of working and, and, and seeing something come out of it mm -hmm. instead of just doing it nothing. You know, and you know better than most what's required to make a successful business. Yeah, you as have a to result. stay. Yeah, you got to stay on it. You have mm -hmm. to be focused, and you know, you have to constantly try to improve, constantly do it better. Just because you have one good day, they don't mean every day is good. You got to learn from that good day and say, hey, how can I repeat this? And you do things you don't want to do, like growing up. Like I didn't want to paint ceilings and cut the grass, but once it was done and it was good, you're like, yeah, okay, that looks great. You know, I'm glad I did it. So behind every leader, mm -hmm. there's a mentor, there's somebody that's influential in your life, or somebody that inspires you. So mm -hmm. I think it was a combination of a lot of different mm -hmm. things. Uh, I was inspired by success of other people, really, mm -hmm. and I wanted that. Mm -hmm. And I was willing to do what it took to do that. Mm -hmm. so, but yes. as far as people, mm -hmm. I would say my father was very strong, influential, forced me to do the right things and never show off about any successes. Mm -hmm. My dad would hate if I would talk about it or people would talk about how successful they were. He'd be like, just take care of business. It speaks for itself. What made you want to expand and grow the business? Marco's Pizza opened up and it took off and it's been getting better and better every year. And it's been 40 years almost now and that store still has every year increased sales, which is amazing because to have continuous sales increases after so many years. Mm, very good. We celebrate your 40th anniversary. Yeah. It's fantastic. Yeah. So you opened up the, this first store in 1978. 1978. But we make our own dough. We cut our own cheese. We used to slice our own pepperoni back then. I mean, the, the tomato sauce was certain tomatoes with certain spices that we would mix ourselves. It wasn't like coming in processed. Mm -hmm. And uh, and our service was good. and and didn't even have any means of advertising because very, very limited funds. I mean, I borrowed money and sold my car. I had a Mustang, sold that, and, and bought a little Pinto. I don't know if you guys remember a little Pinto. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it barely got me there. So as time went on, you know, yeah, we fixed it up, and there was people coming in from other nearby neighborhoods that said, hey, we're coming from 10 miles away to get, you know, this pizza. Why don't you put one in our neighborhood? Why don't you put one here? And that's where we started kind of growing. But I always had the foresight to open up about eight or 10 stores. That was, if I'm gonna do this, I was gonna do it in such a way that I can dominate a small market. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and we've been fortunate to the point where it did take off. And, uh, but I never lost sight of what it took to open up that first location. It wasn't like, I mean, not everything worked, but a lot of things worked. Whatever didn't work, I'd stop doing and keep trying to figure out what does work. That's right. But one, one thing for sure is the fact that Good fresh product, don't make fresh every day. Taking care of your employees, happy employees, make, you know, make happy customers. Do it all. You can't, you can't just pick one angle. You mm -hmm. do it all. So, learned early on that 
I want to treat my employees as good as I want to treat our customers. And then, you know, after a while, after being turned down by a few banks, finally a couple of them started said, okay, well, we'll loan you the money, but you got to put up your house, you got to put up your car, you got to put up. So I risked again everything. But I was very confident. And if I wasn't, I knew I was going to work hard enough to make it happen. you got to have confidence, a direction. And today with Marcos, we've already worked out a lot of those details. You don't have to reinvent the wheel mm -hmm. so much. You know, you just kind of follow our proven systems. And if you can put in that hard work and that, that attitude like, hey, I want this to be very, very good. I want it to be busier than any other competitor in our area. I want to sell more pizza than anybody in our neighborhood and you already have all these tools. Is that how you focus? Do you think that's you know part of building a brand is really focusing on where you're at and expanding and becoming the best in that area? Yeah, because there's no way you can grab anything more than that. It's like a kid with a hand of cookie jar. You can only handle that. So if you're the best within a mile or two of your mm -hmm. store and you can capture that neighborhood crowd where people will tell their friends and relatives, hey, that pizza shop is great. Like you went today to, you know, to a my beauty hair salon. hair salon, and they told you, yeah, that's my favorite pizza. Mm -hmm. There's a reason that that's their favorite pizza. That's right. So when you first open up a location, you have to make sure that you're putting out your best. Your people got to look good. Your store's got to look good. Your pizza's got to be phenomenal, and the service has got to be there. We call it PSI, great product good service and good image. But everybody has a neighborhood pizzeria, you know, I mean everyone... I think it's less and less now, but you're right. A lot of like bigger cities like Cleveland, New York, Chicago, mm -hmm. they do have a lot of neighborhood pizzerias mm -hmm. and, and they're a little more different because you have the, the owners there a lot, or maybe the, the grandmother, the grandfather, the brothers, mm -hmm. the family. But yes, and that's going to be a little tougher to compete against because they have a relationship mm -hmm. with the neighborhood mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and you're, it's going to be tough to crack that. What would you say are some of the key strengths or characteristics that a franchisee owner would have to have in order to be really, really successful? He's got to understand his customers. He's got to understand mm -hmm. his business. In other words, our business is 50% of our sales is Friday and Saturday evenings. Mm -hmm. And if you want to take off somewhere, take off Monday or Tuesday. Or, and if you need to go somewhere important on Friday or Saturday, that's fine. But make sure you're well staffed, well covered, and don't do it too often because then they start realizing you're not there. So you need to understand that we have to take care of business when the business comes. To dig into yourself and say to yourself, hey, what can I do to show my crew, my people, mm -hmm. that I'm willing to jump in, lead from the front, and do the hard work, and do the stuff that nobody wants to do. So hopefully they understand what needs to be done, whether they like it or not. It's just part of business. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you don't like it, find something else you want to do. Mm -hmm. It's about taking 100% responsibility you yourself and not putting the blame on other people. Right, and set the example. Set the example. Set the example. Lead from the front. Lead from the front, not from the back. Mm -hmm. And that's what you've always done. You've I lead from, from the front. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. What advice would you give to young entrepreneurs starting out that are interested in, in a Marcos franchise? I would recommend they work in our store a little bit before they buy a franchise and see what's going on. And if they're willing to see how to handle the rush and how to work weekends and what customers want, some of the issues and concerns and, and the good things, and then if that's what you like, go open up 10 of them, absolutely, mm -hmm. one at a time, of course. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but you have to sacrifice till you get to a level that you feel you're successful and you're comfortable, and then that's fine. Go do what you want to do, but don't lose sight of how you got there. Maybe they're getting comfortable too soon. They get too comfortable too soon. You can't lose sight of what got you there. Mm. If you lose sight of that, you're taking a major risk. Mm. But like you said earlier, you know, I didn't realize the importance of helping out a school or a private school or a football team or a baseball team. I learned that it comes back at you like 10 times. Mm. It's not just advertising. No. Advertising like here, come here and buy this. Support is a little different. You show the community that, hey, I'm part of you guys. You know, we're all here together, and let me help out wherever I can. How do I want to be remembered? I was not even thinking about that one. That's a tough <laughs> one. Uh, just a good leader. Really a good leader. Nice. Yeah, a good leader. Yes. Mm -hmm. Honest good leader. An honest little stern, good leader. A little stern, but good leader. An honest good leader. Mm -hmm. Honest good leader. Yeah. Teach people the right thing. That's right. It's Whether not, it's business or whatever. You know, it's not always about the pleasure. It's about doing the right thing, isn't it? And it's, I'm not perfect. That's right. no way near that. Right. But 
is a good leader. Do the right thing. Mm -hmm. I like that.